I was beginning to think you were going to be late, George. Welcome back. My apologies for the late notice. I hadn't decided if it was the right time to meet, but I figured I was due you a status report of sorts. I uh, interviewed your four, uh, how you say, uh, persons of interest. And I must say, they were quite the assortment, George. They say that the personalities individual invites to a party is a perfect reflection of themselves. Insight into the mind of George. But before we shop. I picked uh, this little pocket watch up and uh, the leg back. I had it custom made, you see. 17th century. Not the earliest. Pocket watches have been in existence since uh, 1510, 1520, something those lines at least but by the 17th century such accuracy reliability and palm of your hand and now hundreds of years later still reliable I uh, have to say, George, again, learned my lesson, not be lighting cigars in your presence, George, they're not, but a um, friend of mine, Captain Bailey, he recommended me Monte Cristo, number three in this case, it's a beautiful smoke, really quiet, mild, but with flavor, chocolate creamy, beautiful. No, oh. I uh, digress, George. Your suspects, as I said, I spoke to them. I started with Vanessa. Originally, I had intended to speak to Chloe first because of your. Uh, to say uh, entanglements or prior entanglement is maybe more accurate but very busy lady I started with Vanessa and uh, given the, her own entanglement with uh, Jimmy he was the logical choice After Vanessa and Jimmy, I went to finally speak to Chloe and your beloved DJ friend, Mark. Quite a character. I haven't shaved in two weeks for you, George. I've been on the road, flying country to country. Maybe next party, try and invite people of a locale. It makes the pursuit of... Uh, Stolen goods, little easier for me, George. Never mind. So, what did they say to me? Your suspects. I will tell you. Vanessa, thank you for agreeing to see me. Good evening, Dimitri, isn't it? Nice to meet you. You'll have to forgive my attire. It's 
been a long day. C- cat PJ is not a problem for me. Though I must say, uh, your apartment, this, uh, this house, beautiful. I belongs to your partner, I assume. Quite the deduction, detective. Unfortunately, no. I'm very single, but oh, so desperate to find myself a man that will make all the money, pay all my bills, so I can just sit on my ass all day and do nothing, because I'm a woman after all, right? My apologies, Vanessa. (laughs) Did not mean to sound rude. I know of your net worth and how you earned it all, by the way. Just to be clear, detective, I see what you're doing. Making rude remarks to try to loosen my tongue. Well, it's not going to work, because I didn't steal that ring. Time will tell, Vanessa. You met, uh... Jimmy Wicket at the party, correct? Or so the police report tells me. Yeah, Jimmy. Bless him. He's harmless. Mm, maybe he is. Yeah. He's harmless. I have yet to meet him. Curious to know, have you met him again? No. We didn't even exchange numbers. Hmm. And what do you think Jimmy would say if I were to ask him if you could have stolen that ring, Vanessa? Well, you're the detective. Why don't you? I'm sure he'd say no. Well, Miss Sude, what if I told you uh, he said he left you alone in the study with the ring? That is true, is it not? According to the police report, at least, Vanessa. Please. Be candidly. Well, he'd be telling the truth, but did he tell you why he left? He did. Vanessa, he said you were very, very drunk. But I don't think that you were. You strike me as an intellectual, Vanessa, smarter than anyone else in the room. I think you feigned the drunkness to get him to leave. But why? Perhaps you wanted to be left alone with the ring. Since you seem to know me so well, detective, you'll know I didn't steal that ring. It was in there when I came into the room, and it was in there when I left. Speaking honestly, I was tired of Jimmy's advances. And the party, in general, for that matter. Hypothetically speaking, Vanessa, let's suppose I believe you. Did you see anyone else as you came out of the study? Uh, The DJ. George mentioned him. Mark? I think it was Mark. Uh, Mm. He was standing outside looking at a statue. It was a little weird, but he looked pretty far gone. He was practically swaying. Mark. Hmm. Well, thank you, Vanessa. Feeling this trip was... For nothing, but 
perhaps not after all. I will uh, bid you good night. Thank you for agreeing to see me. I didn't say I saw him go into the study, just that he was outside of it. I told police this months ago, so it, it's nothing new. Good night, detective. Good night, Vanessa. Hey, Dimitri. Good to meet you, buddy. Oh, come on in. Sit down. Can I get you a drink? Yeah, well, let me guess. You're a... a whiskey guy. Uh, no. No, it, it, it's fine. Thank you. I hope you don't mind if I pour myself one. Uh, Springbank 1919. Nothing beats it. I'm sure. What do you want to know? Uh, well, Jimmy, uh... Hmm. Tell me, I would like to know how you, uh, come to New George. Well, I've known George for years now. He's, uh, he's been a client at my firm. We met, uh, <laughs> because we both have a, a deep love and affinity for sushi. So we went, uh, we went bluefin, uh, bluefin fishing off the coast of Nova Scotia, and he landed a, a, a it was a monster, but he was, uh, he was overconfident, and he didn't, uh, strap himself in, and this fish, um, as it got closer to the boat, it just, it just jumped and actually pulled him over the edge. And uh, he finally went into the water after this giant fish. Um, must have been at least a thousand pounder. And uh, to his credit, George did not let go of the line. And uh, the captain was able to hook him back on board. And he landed the damn thing. We ended up uh, getting back to shore. And, and uh, my chef prepared some of the best Toro and Otoro uh, sushi we have ever had to this day. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's how I, that's how I met George. So he's a friend, you would say? Yes, detective. A good friend for that matter. Then tell me the nature of your promotion, Jimmy, please. That's, that's quite the leap, Dimitri. Not my promotion, uh, your line of questioning. I've been working my butt off here since I was 17. Um, and I worked my way up from the bottom. John Sharp, rest his soul, knew that. The board knew that. And what else do you want to know? The board, you'll notice, Jimmy, appeared last in your list of justifications. Between John, myself, and the board, their opinion is the least valuable to me. Maybe even an influential figure like George. If you're implying George had sway over the board, I don't know. Maybe he did. And I honestly don't care. George is our biggest client. And he's a smart man. I know I belong as CEO, regardless of what your inference is implying. I'm just exploring the information before me, Mr. Wicketts. Would you have me do anything less? Well, if this is what makes you effective and helps bring you closer to that ring, hell, go all out. I'd do anything for the man. Well... George sounds like he has a true friend in you, Jimmy, but please, your account of the evening, please. I arrived at six. George appreciates punctuality, and I always arrive on time. This party started at six, and I arrived wearing a uh, logo patch Dolce & Gabbana blazer, I might add, looking very sharp. Mm. I made a beeline for the liquor cabinet, 
George always serves nothing but the finest, and made idle chit-chat with uh, some faces I knew for a few hours, until in walked the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. Uh -huh. Turns out she was a model. Vanessa Sude, I assume. You've done your research, but in all fairness, I told all of this to the police six months ago. So. And how did it play out, Vanessa? You know Jimmy, did you? You can imagine. We made some small talk. I worked a bit of the, uh, <laughs> the Jimmy magic, <laughs> and we wanted to go find some place a little more private. What can I say? And what time was that, Jimmy? I didn't know six months ago, and I really can't know now, but it was probably 9.30 or 10. Uh, the study was empty, and I remember the ring was definitely there. We both took a moment to admire it. And how long were you there, Jimmy? Together, I mean. Listen, we fooled around for a little bit. It became obvious she was too drunk to make an informed decision, and I'm not a scumbag, so I made my apologies and left. So abruptly, Mr. Ricketts, why would you leave so soon? All right. I've swallowed your BS long enough here, Detective. Yes, I left immediately. Yes, I was alone. And yes, the ring was in the case when I left. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to go home now. Jimmy, I offended you. Not my intention. Good night. I'll be in touch. Well, thanks for seeing me on such short notice, Chloe. I won't take too much of your time. It's my pleasure, Detective. Let's just start. Okay, uh, great. Could you start by telling me what time you arrived at the party? Just after 7 p.m. And who invited you? George did, actually. Um, listen, I understand that you're just doing your job. But I've said all this to the police months ago. And trust me, I want him to find his mom's ring just as badly as anyone else, okay? I, I felt horrible for what happened. I understand, Chloe. Truly, I do. As I said, I won't take too much of your time. Now, I'm curious, what's your relationship to George? Please, humor me, Chloe. Don't, don't look at me like this, please. He is a friend. Mm. I've known him since college, and we met at Harvard. A friend. This isn't how George described your relationship. He said you were partners at one point. A lover, sorry. Oh, this troubles you, Chloe? I dated George briefly, okay? Yes. But it didn't work out and we broke up. We, we still remain good friends. And 
How did George take the breakup, Chloe? How is this relevant? We broke up ten years ago. I just need you to answer the question. Please. Miss Chloe. He didn't take it well, okay? He didn't jump from joy, but who does over a breakup, right? And speaking plainly, I don't like where this line of questions go, okay? I'm not under arrest, and if you don't mind, I need to prepare for my meeting, okay? Which is in 20 minutes. Oh, goodness, I apologize again, Chloe, but I am just keen to understand the nature of your entanglement with uh, George. And I do not mean the word entanglement to sound combative. Uh, forgive me, English is not my first language. Okay, but I do have a meeting in 20 minutes, so can we make it quicker? Of course, of course. Um, so, talk me through your evening, please, Miss Chloe. The timeline. Something. Okay, I arrived just after 7 p.m. And George actually greeted me at the door. Yes, we chatted for a little bit. And then I was doing what I usually do at the parties. Mm. I was just having fun, going around. Then I got a call and... My sitter called me at about 10 p.m. and I stepped into the study to take the call. Goodness, uh, congratulations, Chloe. You managed to compress three full hours into the space of a few sentences. Most impressive. However, let's skip back to the you entering the study. What was the nature of your call? My dog had jumped over the fence, and my sitter was worried, that's why she called me. And that's why I went home almost immediately after she called me, okay? Almost immediately, what else were you doing? Admiring the ring, perhaps? Okay, that's enough. I don't have time for your accusatory tone, okay? I didn't, I didn't take his mom's scrotum drink, okay? Did you see anyone leave the study, at least? I would never, ever hurt George. Understood. Ever. I hope that's clear enough. And I didn't see anyone, because I left in a hurry. I didn't see anyone there. You would never hurt George, Chloe, please. But about ten years ago, you broke his heart, did you not? Please, I, if I was to call this dog sitter, would she collaborate your story, perhaps? Hmm? Oh, stop it, please. Stop it, okay? Cast your bait somewhere else, detective. I'm not, I'm not taking it. Just how I didn't take his 
mom's ring. Listen. Every goddamn question. This conversation is over. Chloe, I... Leave uh, my yeah. house right now. Very well. Good evening, Chloe. Hello, Mr. Becker. Glad I finally caught you. Hi, Detective. Um, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm very busy with my work, you see. Deadlines for the new album and all that. Yes, I'd expect so. What would you write in your new album and all? It must be quite stressful for you. Um, it's fine. I love the music. It's the people and their expectations I don't like as much. Tell me, Mark, is that why you drink so heavily? the party. What? Um, I was DJing at a party. Not drinking would have been weird. Oh, did you mingle at all? <laughs> mingle? Uh, forgive me, English is not my first language. That's not mine either. <laughs> Very well, did you chat with any of the other guests? Um, I spoke to George when I arrived and when I left, and that was it. I'm sorry, detective, but I don't have more information than I did for the police six months ago. Well, what if I told you? You were seen outside of the study just before the ring was stolen, Mark. <laughs> mm, I'd say stealing that ring would have been quite an accomplishment. Considering that I didn't even went into the study, detective. Just clear up the facts for me here, Mark. Uh, what were you doing outside of the study, drunk and seemingly having difficult to stand up straight? Hmm? I liked the statue. It was very well made and, um, knowing George, probably priceless. Where is the ring, Mark? What did you do with it after you left the party? I didn't take the ring. You have no proof of anything, detective. You come to my studio with these accusations, but where are your facts? They're the same as my guilt, non-existent. Now, if you don't mind, I have music to make. You might have fooled the police, Mark, but not me. I will find the ring, and it will trace back to you. All I need is time. Keep telling yourself that, detective. Good night. Hello, detective. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. I was dealing with something in the kitchen, but I made tea. Would you like some? Please. Of course. Will you take milk and sugar? Yes, uh, please, both. Very well. Diana, it's uh, so good of you to see me on such short notice. It's obviously uh, been difficult for George since the ring disappeared. Oh, that's no problem at all. To be honest, I'm very happy to help. Mr. Coldwell hasn't been the same since that ring went missing. 
Is that so? Well, I have to admit, uh, Miss Pickering, it is Miss Pickering, isn't it? I found it very strange the police didn't interview you in the original investigation. Very well, Diana. Not probable for me. Now let us try to understand ourselves better, shall we? How long have you worked for George? Oh gosh. It's been years. I'd say at least ten years. I originally worked for his parents back in the UK and then he offered me a job over here in America Really? So long <laughs> Perhaps this is why you remain Miss Pickering Not Miss hmm? Then you have a cold stare. I let it slide the first time, detective. But my parents always told me if you can't be civil, what use are you to the world? <laughs> well, apparently, at least some use. Considering I'll earn more in the time it takes to conduct our interview than you will all year, Miss Pickering. Sorry, sorry, Diana. You shall find, Mr. Detective, that money brought happiness to no one. And I doubt very much there's a Mrs. Detective either, for that matter. And what happened to your civility, Diana? Your family would be devastated, I'm sure. Tell me. I shall not argue with you, detective. I just wish to help find George's mother's ring. Then tell me this, Diana. You were in the house that night, yes? You were at the party. You would know better than anyone where that ring went. So, where did it go? Tell me, please. Help your beloved George. Hmm? Oh, I was upstairs. I'm not really a fan of George's swanky parties. He invited me, as he always does, but I, I politely declined. Um, I see, and uh, did you come downstairs at any point during the Night's proceedings, Diana. Hmm. Have a think. I went downstairs around ten thirty. I wanted to grab 
on a Georgie special encyclopedia and he keeps them in the study you were in the study and did you notice the ring? how could this have been left out of police investigation Diane? you were in the study well uh, And then uh, noticed on the side that the ring box was open and the ring wasn't in there. So I just figured that George had taken it out to show it off or something like that. The lid was open. Did you talk to George? About this, did you run flailing with your arms, calling attention to this? Well, it's not unusual for the ring to be out of its box. George likes to flaunt it around and talk about his mother. loves that ring. I just went straight back upstairs. Of course, uh, I'm sure the ring is very beautiful and who could blame George for wanting to want her? I'm not blaming you here, Diana. But besides the glass case being open, did you see anyone outside of the study at least? Is there anything unusual about the room? Think, Diana. I didn't see anyone, and no, not really. Uh, I did notice one thing. Mm. There was a strong smell of aftershave, and I'd recognize it anywhere, as it's my favorite. Is it called Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mans something? Le Mail? Does George wear this aftershave? Have you smelled it on him before? Well actually, he hasn't been staying here very much. remember him ever wearing that. He wears Hugo Boss, if I remember correctly. Thank you, Diana. You've actually been very helpful. I need to be going. I have some leads to follow up. Thank you. Oh, I do hope so, Detective. I think it will be a weight off George's mind. Good night. Good night. And do sleep well. Good night. Mark is, uh, an interesting fellow, wouldn't you agree? Might be my kind of person. That might surprise you, but he is. I am also uh, not really a people person. Why do you think I came a detective? It's not uh, because I like people. It's because I dictate line of questioning. The small talk is on my terms. 
I apologize. Do not have anything more strong, concrete at this time for you, George. Indeed, I, at least for right now, have uncovered nothing further than the police. But I am this close, George. This close. I can almost smell it. There, uh, is one more thing, George. I noticed on your uh, summary you provided to me and also in the police reports. You have a, a living maid, do you not? She has... Uh, was never questioned by police or anyone else for that matter. But she was there that night, no? I see. Well, uh, as it happened, I had a word with Diana. Not uh, for any reason other than I thought I have time. I was in the States anyway. Um, nice girl. Sweet. And I think she's sweet on you, George. But, uh, alas, she had nothing. No proof of anything, at least. But you already knew that, George, otherwise you would have had her as one of your persons of interest. Instead, she failed to make the list. Understanding, why would you want to involve your uh, most personal staff? She didn't even attend the party. Anyway, I wanted to brief you, bring you uh, speed, up to speed, and as I said, I'm close. Have patience, George. For well, now, I will say good night. Have a safe trip, safe flight home. And George, one more thing. Curiously, what is that? Uh, that smell? Beautiful after a shave, I can smell it's uh, La Male Jean Paul Gaultier. But why? No reason. Thank you.